In the last stream, we were working on finally setting up a higher tier of power generation. We unlocked the steam dynamos and we also unlocked the research for the boiler conversion augment and the turbine conversion augment to allow us to extract even more power out of the steam dynamos by having one of them used to make steam with water and coal coke and the others used to burn that steam into power. Now, there are slight problems with our current power setup that I didn't realize until after the end of the last episode. The biggest problem is that we actually can't use the vast majority of the power that's being generated by these steam dynamos currently because of the fact that the LV wire connectors that we're currently using have a maximum throughput of 100 redstone flux per tick. So the connectors themselves can only input and output up to 100 redstone flux per tick, which means that if we were to do something like this and then connect that back up to our pylons, despite the fact that this can produce 240 redstone flux per tick, we can only pull 100 redstone flux per tick out of it. And so at some point fairly soon, we are gonna want to look at upgrading our power situation. We do have two options here. The first is to upgrade to MV cables. These are medium voltage cables. That does require the next tier of research, which is hopefully what we're going to work towards in today's stream. And this can move up to a thousand redstone flux per tick into and out of any given block. And so that would be more than enough for the dynamos here. The other option is the LV energy conduit. This one is cheaper and definitely doable right now. These can move up to 500 redstone flux per tick into and out of any block or item. The only trouble with the conduits is that it's much more difficult to run energy over a longer distance because you have to put down a single conduit in every single block, much like the item conduits, unlike with the LV and MV cables where you can run overhead wires over quite a long distance for a fairly cheap price. Anyway, you may notice that between streams I have gone ahead and moved this setup. The reason for that is that between streams I have done a little bit of base building over here. I am not quite sure if I am a big fan of the brick. This is kind of a work in progress, but over here we have some uh, steel scaffolding. We've got some uh, chiseled bricks. We've got some marble. We then have some chiseled glass. You can chisel glass in the exact same way that you chisel any other block. The glass that I am using is this one right here, this stone framed glass. Uh, we've got a bit of it left in our inventory here. And we've got some treated wood on the floor as well. The scaffolding is quite nice because it means that we can just climb up to the top here. And then uh, you can also craft the scaffolding into different tiers of scaffolding as well. So it starts out as just steel scaffolding. You can craft it into a different texture of steel scaffolding. And then you can craft it one more time into this uh, kind of treated wood topped steel scaffolding, which I quite like the look of. And uh, then we're using treated wood itself as the, uh, the floor and the ceiling of this new building. And so between streams, I've kind of just done a bit of work here moving our chests. I did upgrade one of the chests to a diamond chest because once again, we are running very low on space. And in fact, that's one of the first things that I do want to upgrade in today's stream. I want to get some storage drawers connected up and uh, start to move things like dirt and you know excess redstone and coal and all that kind of stuff out of these chests and into their own storage drawers to free up a lot of space and also just give us more space in general to store those items that we have large amounts of. Before we do that though, one quick thing here. So we've got our two kind of ore processing setups. This one on the right is for iron. Right now, this is not connected to anything. So we do need to reset that up because right now our research is not being done because the copper and iron is not connected. I have gone ahead and rerouted the item pipes here. This is a bit of a mess, mostly because I want to be able to show you guys where the item conduit is going. Obviously, this is gonna get covered up in the future, but uh, all I've done is just run item conduits from these drawers, and instead of having them go straight up like we did before, they're now going all the way over this way, and then they go up and it splits to these two processing units. And so I do plan on putting some item conduits under these furnaces and connecting them to these storage drawers to allow us to then pop out of those storage drawers and back around to our main network but before we do that, one pretty nifty little feature that I did want to uh, make you guys aware of, if you weren't already, was the ability to pass power through a block. You'll notice right here that we don't have any wires kind of coming through the open door here. The reason for that is that we have one wire that goes all the way over here, around here, and if you put two LV wire connectors onto a single block, for example, I'm gonna do it here, not here, here, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside as well. We're gonna put another LVY connector on the inside of that same block, which is here. Once you've done that, you can then take your engineer's hammer, right click on one of these LVY connectors. It doesn't matter which one you do. 
you'll then notice that the block kind of turns black, and now this is just a pass-through. So anything that you connect on the outside will now connect on the inside as well. And so if I were to grab some insulated LV wire coil, we could do this and this. And right now, you'll notice that this external heater is out of power. And you'll also notice that I have, uh, once again, put this down incorrectly, as I tend to do. Let me go and quickly try and pick that up. This time, I want to put it down without shifting like that. We can replace down the wire connector. We can reconnect that up to our LV wire relay. And then now, on the outside, here we can do the same thing again. We can right-click on the connector, right-click over here, and that power is going to pass through this block round and into our external heater. And you'll see this now has power, and our furnaces are working. And so that's just a nice, easy way of getting power into buildings. So you don't have to have, you know, janky cables kind of running through open windows or through blocks or anything like that, which uh, is pretty nifty. And so, as I mentioned, I do want to get more storage drawers. Before we do that, I think it's probably going to be best for us to invest into a draw controller. That's this guy right here. And maybe even before we do that, it might not be a terrible idea for us to get some more wood. We've got 32 wood in total. And people in the YouTube comments have been suggesting that we try using spruce trees just because apparently, I say apparently, I'm fairly certain that we can grow these much taller. If we do like one, two, three, four, we can plant a, a two by two spruce tree. That should grow much taller than a standard oak tree. And therefore, because of the fact that we have the tree can potato mod installed, whenever we break the bottom block, the whole tree is going to come down and we're just going to get more wood per tree and therefore more saplings and we can expand it out and we can have a ton of those tall trees going forward. Right now, uh, do we have any spare phyto grow? We do. I think we should be able to use that to potentially accelerate the growth of this initial two by two tree. Never mind. <laughs> that did not work. Okay. Um, I guess we'll just leave that and hope that that grows somewhat quickly. Uh, back over here. I think we do have enough wood to maybe get started, but I did just want to get those spruce saplings down so we're ready for the future. Let's do something like this and get some chests. And right now we do have two draws spare, so we should actually be able to make this draw controller right away. For that, we need uh, two more redstone comparators. That's fine. Let's just craft six redstone torches. Two redstone comparators. I think we've got more than enough nether quartz. And by that, I mean barely enough nether quartz to make that happen. That is fine. And then boom and boom. The draw controller is pretty nifty because what it's going to allow us to do is kind of connect all of our storage drawers, the drawers that are going to actually store stuff in the wall here together and make them accessible via this one centralized location. What I mean by that is that uh, if I were to go ahead and place the draw controller, let's say right here, we can then use just one of these storage link cable. And I think we do still have a few spare. We do indeed. If I put that storage link cable, let's say right here like that, now the simple storage network has access to that draw controller. And by extension, it will have access to anything that we connect to that draw controller. Uh, and so right now, if we look inside of our system, there is no iron or very little iron and copper. That's because most of our iron and copper is in these drawers. If I were to move this drawer and place it on top of this draw controller, like this, now if I look inside of the storage system, you can see that we have access to that iron, despite the fact that there's no storage link cable on the iron. And that's because it's been connected through the draw controller. And you can keep doing this. You can kind of pass that through to multiple different drawers. If I put the copper right here, that copper connects to the iron drawer, which connects to the draw controller. And now that copper is also available which is pretty cool stuff. So I'm not actually gonna put those there because I do still want my uh, copper and iron to be elsewhere. But the idea now is that we can put down storage drawers for coal, for redstone, for diamonds, for all that kind of stuff that we've got a ton of, uh, for dirt even, and have those all connected via that one storage cable. Now, one other nifty thing that we can do here is we can also use these framed drawers here. To use these, we first need a framing table. The framing table is made by crafting five trim together. Trim is super easy to make. It's made with just planks and sticks. And essentially, trim is just a way of connecting drawers together if you don't want to use drawers. So like we just did here, what you can also do is you can place a drawer like that on the controller. And then let's say that for whatever reason, we wanted the copper to go up here and we didn't want to have to put another drawer in between, we could just put some trim there like that, and that connects the copper up to the system. Uh, you can also run that along the outside as well. You can put it really wherever you like. And the draw controller, by the way, works anywhere up to uh, 12 blocks away in this version of Minecraft. So you can have up to 12 drawers in each direction connected to the draw controller. Once you get to the 13th drawer, that draw's not gonna work, um, at least again in this version 
of Minecraft and newer versions of Minecraft. You can go much, much further with that kind of stuff. Anyway, let me put this back down over here and let's get these framed draws underway. So as I mentioned, we need to get five trims. So we are gonna have to make two sets of it. That is fine. Once we have that, we should then be able to make the framing table, which for now, I'm gonna go ahead and place down. Let's say right about here, like that. And I really thought that was gonna go down the other way. That's fine, let's try that again. Placing it here. Is that torch in the way? It is, huh. But you can place it down afterwards. Not quite sure what the deal is there. Anyway, this framing table allows us to customize the look of framed drawers. And so if we were to get a framed draw, which you can make in the same way as a regular draw, but just by replacing oak planks with sticks, you can get a framed draw, and then the framed draw can be retextured to look basically however you want it to look. For example, I could put some bricks in here, I could put some marble in here, and I could put some oak in here, and you'll see that we have this kind of wacky looking storage drawer. Basically, the bottom slot here decides what texture is going to be used for the front of the block, uh, the right block here decides the trim that goes all the way around the outside, and then the uh, top left block there decides the faces. Uh, you don't have to use a trim, so you can just do this and this, you can go without a trim. You also don't need to uh, pick a face either, you can just do the one block, but uh, you can't just do the other blocks. So this block in the top left is required, and then the other two here are optional if you want different faces. And so essentially now we've got to pick how we want our storage drawers to look that are gonna go into this wall, and I think in general, I'm kind of just gonna go with like a standard marble face here. So if we chisel some of our marble down into, I think just marble big tile like this, I think that is gonna look kind of fine. We could do something like this, where we have kind of brick on the edges and then marble at the front. So that the back of this looks um, a bit more bricky. That could work as well. But I think for the most part, I'm kind of just gonna be happy with just marble like this. I think just having drawers in the wall like this, and then we can go ahead and take, you know, for example, things like the uh, coal that we have here and just put those in. I think that's gonna be fine. I think we wanna just make a few drawers, fill this wall with those marble colored drawers, and then start putting in things like the uh, redstone, like the coal, like the dirt that we don't want clogging up our chests. And then from there, we can also move on and potentially look at upgrading some of the other drawers around the base and potentially uh, retexturing some of these as well to make them look a little bit nicer. And here we go, not too long later, we've now got a bunch of drawers in the wall here, 12 in total, and I've began to move some of the items that were clogging up our chests out of these chests, and that is giving us quite a bit more space. Obviously, we still have quite a bit of iron and copper clogging things up as well. To, uh, to free up space there, we just need to make some draw upgrades, much like we did in the last episode, and uh, install those into our pre-existing drawers so that we can move the iron and the copper out of these chests and back into the regular drawers. For now, I think we'll just go with standard iron upgrades. These increase the base value by four times, which is quite a lot. We could go even higher using gold, diamond, or emerald upgrades, but right now we don't have that much gold, we don't have that much diamond, and we don't have any emerald. So I think for the time being, iron is the way to go. There's also the obsidian upgrade, but uh, we also don't have access to obsidian currently either. So I think really, it's uh, not really much of a choice. Iron is kind of all that we can go with. And so we can just do this, and this, and then we can go ahead and uh, basically move all of the uh, iron and copper that is in the system out of the system, because again, right now, we actually don't have our ingot drawers connected up. That is, of course, something that I would like to change, but for the time being, let's just do something like this, and let's also go ahead and grab the iron and move all that out as well, and that is gonna give us, hopefully, more than enough space in these current chests to, uh, to see us into the near future. And of course, going forward, if we find ourselves with any more items that we have like a super large quantity of and we wanna get rid of that extra large quantity, we can then just add them to the wall because we do still have a bunch of space in these free storage drawers. One thing we do want to do here is we do wanna go ahead and grab a draw key. We want to make sure that we lock all of these items to these drawers. That way, if we ever run out of redstone, for example, and then we start putting redstone in again, it will still go to this drawer. And we also want to lock the empty drawers as well. If we don't lock the empty drawers, then there's a chance that like random things like this diamond chisel end up in those drawers, which is a bit of a waste of space. Along the same lines here, we do also want to go and increase the priority on this link cable. If we set the priority here, again, to like minus 20 or minus 25 maybe, Basically, we just wanna tell the system to try and put things in the storage drawer first. Again, with this system, a lower priority is actually a higher priority. And so if we set that to a, a super low number, whenever we put something into our advanced storage remote, it's going to try and put the items into the storage drawers first. And so again, like right now, we've got 804 redstone. If I take some out and put it back in, it's gonna go back into this drawer and not into one of these chests. 
People are also pointing out we have a lot of reservoirs. That is true. Um, the reason for that is that there is a, um, a bug in the pack, or like a glitch, I think. I didn't actually make this many reservoirs. What I was doing is I was taking some reservoirs, and then uh, when I was making all of the brick for this building here, I went over to the Acquis Accumulator, because here you can just instantly fill up a reservoir. It's a lot faster than doing it over by an unlimited water source. Over here, this just goes ahead and does it one at a time, whereas on the Acquis Accumulator, it uh, lets you just pick it up all at once, and so, boom, it's much nicer. And for whatever reason, whenever you, like, shift craft with the reservoir, there seems to be a chance that you get, like, an extra reservoir. And so, uh, again, clear was the recipe that I was making a lot of, which is just dirt slag and water. Uh, slag we've got a lot of now because our steel processing has been chugging away since the end of the last stream. But uh, if I were to do this with the slag here and the dirt here, right now we've got how many reservoirs? We've got seven, eight, nine, and then 10, including this one. Whenever I shift click with it, there seems to be a chance that you get like an extra reservoir. I'm not quite sure how it works, but it happened a couple of times while I was making clay and also while I was making uh, treated wood as well. I'm not quite sure what the uh, what the deal is there. You'll see we do need a little bit more treated wood actually for our roof here. I'll do that real quick and I'll see if this one uh, does it as well. But whenever I shift clicked, sometimes it would uh, pull an extra reservoir and then give me an extra one. Again, not quite sure if that's a, a I assume that's a bug, but anyway. For the uh, treated wood here, we can just chisel it. I've been using these uh, treated wooden planks and then uh, using our diamond wand, we can hopefully quite quickly try and uh, fill in at least a little bit more of the roof here. It does mean that we end up with a lot of uh, reservoirs in the system that are kind of just clogging up space unnecessarily, but uh, but maybe we'll use them at some point in the uh, in the near future. Anyway, now that all that is taken care of, obviously we do still need a bit more treated wood, but we are once again out of wood and I don't want to spend uh, too much of today's episode chopping down trees and our spruce tree is, uh, is still not yet grown. Either way, while I was building all of this, our research was chugging along, and so now we do have 465 mechanics research, along with 637 logistics research. And so I believe that we now do have everything that we need to unlock the aluminum research. Not this one here, we need to go down to here and unlock this. Now, uh, before I do that, another thing that people have been uh, kind of complaining about a little bit in the YouTube comments is my lack of use of compacting drawers. And for those who don't know, compacting drawers are super useful, especially for the research because they allow us to, to pull the research out in its compressed form without having to micro craft it. So essentially to make the compacting drawer here, we need more wood. And so despite what I just said mere seconds ago about not cutting down more trees today, I'm gonna go and uh, quickly cut down some trees. All right, so once again, a little bit of tree farming later, I have gone ahead and finished the roof. Also, it turns out that uh, I think we just needed more space around the saplings here. When there was grass, like around here that was blocking this uh, spruce tree from growing. Now that the spruce tree is grown though, we can cut this down all at once. It does take longer to break this block because the tree is so big, but I do still think it is more efficient than cutting down a lot of oak trees. And just with that one tree alone there, we got uh, like a stack and a half of spruce wood, which is very nice indeed. And especially now that it doesn't matter what wood we use for the drawers, we can use any wood. Before, I kind of wanted to use oak wood for everything because I wanted all my drawers to look the same. Uh, if you make your storage drawer out of spruce wood, it's going to look a little bit different than the oak drawer. But now that we're making framed drawers, we can really use any wood that we like. And so uh, real quick, let's just put down a couple more of these uh, two by two spruce trees so that if we do need more wood in the future, we can just uh, go ahead and chop down a couple of these and get many, many stacks of uh, spruce wood nice and quickly. Uh, at least until we can get uh, wood automated, which hopefully isn't going to be too far away. Anyway, back over here, we were working on getting a compacting drawer. So for that, we needed more pistons. Pistons now should be easy enough to come by. We'll craft some of the spruce wood down into spruce wood planks, and then we'll craft up just a couple of those pistons. Ideally, I want at least two of these, which means we do also need to get um, at least two more regular storage drawers that we can then upgrade uh, into compacting drawers. For this, we don't need to bother with the frame drawers. We can just do this, get two of those, and then upgrade those to the compacting drawers. One and two. And once we have the compacting drawers, I don't know in this pack if we can frame these. We can't, unfortunately. Sometimes with uh, some mods, you can make these look different as well, but it looks like in this pack, the compacting drawers are not able to be framed and not able to be customized. That's fine. We can take these and we can use them to store our research. The idea here is that if I put this down like so, and then I fill it up with research, it's gonna make that research available 
in all of its different tiers. It doesn't actually give you more research, but you'll see here that we can either take this research out as 449 basic research, as 56x8 research, or as 7x64 research. And so it just allows us to take the research out in whatever form we like without having to do the microcrafting, which is pretty cool. And it also saves us on making even more of these auto workbenches to auto craft that stuff down for us. So let's just go ahead and move all of these over as well. We'll then quickly lock these drawers. And at that point, we should then be able to grab however much research is needed for aluminum. It is 32. We have 60 uh, X8 mechanics research. And so if we take all 60 out, we can then hand 32 in to unlock aluminum. We can put the rest back in there for use later on in the episode and now we should finally be able to mine aluminum and hopefully start working towards that next tier of research for that we have now unlocked flux electrum before it uh, said this item was unknown so uh, before we can get to aluminum here we do have to get flux electrum thankfully i don't think this is going to be too difficult although right now how much electrum do we have the answer is zero so let me grab a couple of pieces of gold i'm gonna make quite a bit of electrum here we could definitely do with more silver, although I think we might actually have more silver. Let me quickly go and check that drill we put down last episode and see if there isn't some more silver ready for us. Look at that. We've got two stacks of silver ore ready to go, as well as a ton of copper as well. And so at this point, it might be the gold potentially that is going to, uh, to slow us down. Already we can see our spruce trees growing up quite nicely, but uh, let's quickly get some of this silver processed so we can make more electrum going forward because again if we want to get uh, the next tier of research that requires some of that fluxed electrum and so we're basically going to have to automate electrum at some point fairly soon here if we do actually want to get uh, a lot of the next tier of research going and i guess actually before we go too much further one thing i would like to do is actually get things back online here because again right now the iron and copper is not going to where it needs to go before we do that i would like to get a drill going for aluminum and so First, oh, but we need to make the first one of these before we can get the drill going for aluminum. Okay, in that case then, let's quickly see if we can't make a magma crucible along with a fluid transposer. These are two new machines from thermal expansion and together these are going to allow us to make the fluxed electrum. Both of them require a redstone reception coil. Both of them require a machine frame. Thankfully, the machine frames are not too bad here. And other than that, the Magma Crucible requires Nether Brick, which we don't have, but we can make fairly easily. And that gets us the Magma Crucible. And then as for the Fluid Transposer, it just needs glass and a bucket. A bucket, of course, super easy for us to make. We've got an abundance of iron, and that is basically everything. All we need to do now is actually make the Fluxed Electrum. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two machines down over here and just connect them directly to the dynamos like this. What we can do here is we can place redstone into the magma crucible, and that is going to break that redstone down into destabilized redstone, which is a liquid. We then want to send that destabilized redstone out of the left side, so orange, to the fluid transposer. So here we want to set the right hand side to blue, and then we just take the electrum that is being made over here, and we place that electrum into the fluid transposer. And as soon as we get 200 millibuckets of destabilized redstone it's going to start processing that 200 millibuckets with one electrum ingot to get us one fluxed electrum ingot and so this is basically how we automate that fluxed electrum and uh, if we take a quick peek at the tier 3 research here we can see that the recipe for it requires one fluxed electrum one redstone engineering block and one aluminum widget the flux electrum is going to be fairly easy to automate. All we have to do is automate the mining of gold and silver, automate the smelting of those and the alloying of those into electrum, and then we have to automate the production of redstone, and then we just have to process the redstone and electrum through these two machines to get fluxed electrum. We then, of course, have the redstone engineering block, which is also pretty easy to make. We already have iron, we already have copper, and we already have redstone, so this is definitely the easiest part of the tier three research. And then the final piece is the aluminum widget. This is just made from a bunch of different variations of aluminum. We have the aluminum gear, which we can make in a metal press. We have the aluminum wire, which we can make in a metal press. And then we have the aluminum structural arm, which is made by crafting six aluminum scaffolding together, which is made with aluminum ingots and aluminum rods, which you guessed it, can be made in a metal press. So we need aluminum. For that, we can go back to the main quest line. And now that we have the fluxed electrum, we just need to get one fluxed electrum drill head, which does require eight fluxed electrum. So it's basically a case here of dumping a bunch of redstone in and trying to get six more fluxed electrum. Of course, as we've seen before, we can see about making some more hardened upgrade kits, 
although it would appear that we are completely out of invar. That isn't a problem. We can, of course, grab some more iron and some more nickel and quickly whip that up inside of the alloy kiln here. Once we have some more invar, we can make, let's say, two bronze gears and then two of these hardened upgrade kits. And if we do this and this, that's going to make this machine just that little bit faster and should allow us to get the flux electrum just that little bit quicker. I did mention before that the uh, machine augments here are also makeable and it might not be a terrible idea to invest in the research for those, especially because we have so much mechanics research available to us now. So the augment in question is this one right here, the auxiliary reception coil. It's made with redstone and gold, basically a lot of redstone and gold. Right now, it's the Magma Crucible that's slowing us down. And so in the augment slot, you'll see right now it's using 80 redstone flux per tick. If we place in this augment, that goes up to 160 RF per tick. It doubles the, uh, the speed at which this machine works. And over here, we should now be getting that destabilized redstone faster. And if we wanted to, we could use yet more of our gold here to make yet another one of these reception coils and place that in here. And this as well is now gonna use substantially more power to produce these fluxed electrum ingots just that little bit quicker. Once we have at least eight of them though, we should then be able to look at making that fluxed electrum drill. For that, we do need either a steel drill head or an invar drill head. Because we unlocked the invar drill head recipe in the last episode, I do think it's gonna be worth using that instead. But of course, to make that happen, we need at least 20 seven invar we could go and steal the invar drill head that we already have but i do want to keep that going for future silver and gold mining and so for now let's just do something like this and see if we can't get 27 invar which i really don't think is going to take us too long one thing that we do want to unlock today ideally is this machine here the induction smelter the induction smelter is a machine from thermal expansion that is going to allow us to create these alloys without using the alloy kiln, which is good because I don't really think you can automate the alloy kiln, at least not particularly easily, whereas the induction smelter takes up much less space and much like these machines here can be upgraded to be much, much faster. And so I think one of the first things that we should do with our production research is see about getting that um, induction smelter. There is also the alloy furnace here from nuclear craft, which we do have to unlock first anyway. And so real quick, let me grab some logistics and mechanics research. Let's unlock the alloy furnace here. This is also pretty good actually in terms of just being faster and, and better than the alloy kiln that we have. How expensive is the alloy furnace? It's not too bad. The only thing we're missing is basic plating, which is just some lead. We have quite a bit of lead actually. And so if we do this, that actually gets us the alloy furnace. And uh, if we place that down here in place of this uh, somewhat useless LV wire connector, we could then potentially use that as a, a faster way of making some of these alloys. Let's take a look. In here, if I put in some nickel and some iron, that is gonna process maybe not faster, it might be the same speed. Uh, the benefit, I guess, is that you can configure the sides to the inputs and outputs and you can fully automate this. It is also upgradable with speed and energy upgrades, but we do have to unlock those, of course. They are right here. And for that, we need a lot of logistics research, a lot of mechanics research, and a little bit of production. So to be honest, while this does work, I think it is still going to be beneficial, more beneficial, I should say, for us to unlock the induction smelter, because although this does require a little bit of production research, we can make it much faster, much more early on in the pack, if that makes sense. Anyway, now that we have uh, 57 invar, let's go ahead and make four invar blocks. And once we have four invar blocks, let's make yet another invar drill head, and then we can just put that in the middle, surround it with fluxed electrum, and boom, we have a flux electrum drill head, which is going to allow us to mine that all important aluminum. And of course, much like all of the other quests before it, back here in the main quest line, we can collect the aluminum, platinum, thorium, and uranium ore, all of which can now be mined with the fluxed electrum drill head. And you'll see that we have unlocked a new edge, the aluminum edge, and with that, we now have a much expanded quest line, including access to things like Lumium and tree farming, which is over here, deep mob learning, which is going to give us automated redstone, enderpearls, glowstone, uh, as well as things like blitz powder, bazaars powder, and blizz powder, which we can also potentially use for automated ores as well. And up here, you can see that we do move into things like nuclear craft as we move further on. And I think here, the uh, boron ingot, magnesium ingot, and lithium ingot are kind of the next gateway, much like what we've just done with aluminum. Anyway, for the time being, what we need to do is we need to grab our seismic reader, whack in the aluminum ore, and go and throw down yet another drill. 
up here. So this is kind of in a similar location, actually, to our pre-existing silver setup. I might just go ahead and move one of those ores, although I think it is 100% going to be worth quickly spending a few minutes investing in yet another electric drill and probably another 10 of these tier three solar panels just so that we can uh, fully automate the mining of aluminum and then uh, probably at some point between streams i'll look at uh, expanding out our rail network to hook up to that aluminum drill so we can start bringing that in for automation because i think next episode we do want to start looking at uh, setting up more researchers uh, specifically researchers for the tier three production research and automating that stuff all right so a little bit of time later i have managed to make another electric drill which we can put down here unfortunately none of the chunks that have aluminum in them have that much aluminum in them so copper and iron whenever we go to one of those chunks it'll have like you know three thousand four thousand iron or copper in it the best aluminum chunk that we have nearby is this one here that has 753 aluminum and i think the reason for that is just that as we go forward the game expects us to, to invest more and more in this research for ore processing right at the minute we're doing 2.5x ore processing but we can up that to 5x if we get the flux anodizers here and then these all kind of add up so if we get an induction smelter you can then use that to double and then take the double from there and put it in the pulverizer to then 2.5x that which effectively gives you a, a 5x and then you can use the flux anodizer after that to get you to 10x and so you can kind of stack the multipliers here and the maximum multiplier i think is over 100x if you do 3 multiplied by 3.5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3.5 multiplied by 2. I think that is like the highest amount of ore processing you can get, which is um, is quite high. So it, it does get pretty crazy in the future. For now, though, um, we're just going to have to be very uh, efficient with the way we process aluminum. But uh, over here, I've made six of these solar panels, which, of course, isn't enough. We do need ten. I have almost everything it takes to make the remaining four. The only things we're missing are diamonds. And so um, I've reset up the drill over there that's got like diamonds being mined and so uh, we're gonna get some slowly but surely for now though i can put the uh, fluxed electrum in here and again for the time being i'm just gonna throw a, uh, a standard chest down here in fact i might even go ahead and splurge on an iron chest just to hold a little bit more if we do this and this that's gonna slowly but surely start acquiring copper and aluminum and while we wait for this to get some aluminum and also while i wait for some more diamonds to come in, I'm gonna quickly go ahead and uh, throw down some more item conduits, basically just redoing the stuff we did previously to get the uh, the iron going again, because right now the iron is not actively going into this drawer from the furnaces. And then uh, also, again, there's no wires under here. We want to set it up so that the iron and the copper go from these drawers back around to the research so we can get the research back online as well. So uh, I'm gonna quickly work on that while we wait for aluminum and diamonds. And uh, hopefully when we come back, we can get the uh, aluminum drill running at full speed with the 10 solar panels and we can start using some of the aluminum that we've already got to uh, start working on getting our first couple of pieces of tier three research all right again a little while later we now finally have enough solar panels here to get this running at full speed in the time it took me to do that we've managed to get 30 aluminum on top of the uh, well 29 on the one we already have i did say before we went away that i was going to reconnect up copper and iron so that the research could start going again i've not done that the reason for that is that although i have gone to the the trouble of setting these up in here i don't actually think we're going to leave them in here for very long because as i was just mentioning especially with aluminum we need a lot of aluminum to make a lot of the tier 3 research and we do need a lot of the tier 3 research to progress forward in the pig and so we do want to focus i think next on upgrading our ore processing right now we're just getting that 2.5x we need to get to 5x maybe 10x maybe further in the uh, the next few episodes and so to do that i think we're definitely going to move this ore processing out of this building and into a different building and so i didn't want to go through the rigmarole of reconnecting up and laying a bunch of item conduits and maybe even some drawer trim to connect the drawers up to this drawer controller to then move it all you know next episode when we work on ore processing and so i think one thing we can do right off the bat here is get like a little bit of mechanics and logistics research we do still have a fair amount of both of these and we can unlock the redstone furnace along with the fluxed anodizers here which i don't think are going to be too difficult for us to make the redstone furnace is not much faster than a regular furnace it might be the same speed actually uh, it does use more power than a regular furnace but the flux anodizer augment here is one that's fairly easy to make it's invar bronze redstone conductance coil and redstone and 
if we put this into a redstone furnace as an augment, it's going to give us double outputs. And so the idea here is that we can take, for example, one aluminum ore. We can then run that through the pulverizer to get 2.5 times as much aluminum dust. We can then take that aluminum dust, and if we run it through a redstone furnace with the flux anodizer augment, we're going to get two aluminum ingots, which essentially takes us from 2.5x ore processing up to 5x, because now we're doubling that 2.5x and getting five aluminum ingots for every ore. We then can take it one step further, and as soon as we've got a little bit of production research, which I think we'll work on in the next episode, we can unlock that induction smelter, which is not only going to allow us to automate the production of Electrum, which we need to do in order to actually automate that production research, but if we, instead of putting the aluminum into the pulverizer first, if we first put it into the induction smelter, that in and of itself, I believe, will double the uh, output. You'll see here it says 2x to 3x. I believe that's going to double the output. We can then run it through the pulverizer to get that 5x, and then we can run it through the flux anodizer in the redstone furnace to get 10x. And so I think it's going to be very doable for us to upgrade our current 2.5x all processing setup to a 10x all processing setup in the next episode. And that's going to be very useful, especially for things like aluminum, because it's going to allow us to go from 700 aluminum ore to 7,000 aluminum ingots, which is uh, substantially better than the current setup that we have. And so I think that is what we will work on next time. And we'll find like a new place to actually start setting up all of the ore processing, because going forward, we need to do a lot of ore processing. Right now, we're just doing copper and iron. But again, if we're going to automate production, we need to automate the production of Electrum, which means we need to automate the mining and processing of gold and silver. Again, gold and silver, much like aluminum, doesn't come in large quantities. And so we want to be able to squeeze as much as we possibly can out of every single ore. And again, in here, we don't really have enough space to set up multiple production lines for gold, for silver, for nickel, for iron, for aluminum, for copper, for lead, for silver, for all of the ores that we need to process. And so we'll set up a new area and we'll work on doing the processing there. But that is, of course, a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Feed the Factory there.